Good morning, St. Francis, and good morning, people of God. It is Thursday, the 17th, 17th day of February, 2022. Thursday in the sixth week of the year, the sixth week in ordinary time. Coming to you on location today, I am in Silver Spring, Maryland, suburb of DC, which you may or may not know, uh, but where am I at? I am at Holy Name College. Um, and Holy Name College uh, was for many years for Holy Name Province, uh, the center of theological studies, as well as studies for other ministries uh, that would be used within the province. Uh, today, it houses the postulancy of of, the, um, of what will be the United Franciscan Province in a couple of years of the United States. Uh, it, uh, postulancy is the first year of formation uh, for men who are interested in becoming Franciscan friars. And so our postulancy uh, takes place here at my Holy Name College in Silver Spring. So I am here with them for the next two days uh, to talk about Lent, uh, because like I said yesterday, uh, it's less now, less than two weeks uh, today uh, until Ash Wednesday. Uh, so uh, remember, Lent will begin on the first Sunday of Lent, but the fast begins um, on Ash Wednesday. Uh, we'll get more to that later on. Uh, but going to open up the riches of Lent to our postulants uh, these next two days, Friday, uh, today, Thursday, and Friday. Um, in the readings today, the letter of James continues again about egalitarianism, uh, showing no partiality between rich and poor. Um, again, James citing the fact that God chooses the poor uh, to inherit faith, to inherit uh, the, the riches of the kingdom, of the reign of God, uh, because the rich can be open, uh, because the poor can be open to those kinds of things that unfortunately the rich may not be able uh, to be open to because they are so concerned with maintaining their place in society, maintaining their wealth, maintaining their luxuries, maintaining identity and influence and whatever it is. Unfortunately, those kinds of things can get in the way of understanding the riches and the wonder of what it means to be a part of the reign of God and a part of the life of God in this world. Um, so James cautions, you know, the, the Christian communities, not basically just to lavish praise or lavish all kinds of attention over the richer members, uh, but to do it equally between rich and poor. Uh, because again, it is in the sense and the sight of the poor uh, that God um, offers uh, a new way of looking at the world, a new way of looking at life uh, that our society and culture uh, cannot understand. They can never afford to offer on its own. In the gospel today, uh, continuing still from Mark, Jesus asks that, asks that question, the apostles, who do people say that I am? Um, and again, they come up with all kinds of answers, Elijah, John the Baptist, or whatever, whatever. And again, Peter is just the one who says, you are the Christ, the Messiah. And that is it. Uh, there is in Mark no, no 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 citation as there is in Matthew about Peter becoming the first pope and 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 uh, establishing the kingdom and the gates of hell will not be able to overpower it and whatever whatever whatever. Um, that's not the case in Mark's gospel. Again, if Mark's gospel is the earliest gospel, we have to think about that. Um, again, the play up of Peter doesn't necessarily happen, and in fact, the gospel continues with Peter you know, with, with Jesus saying that the Messiah must suffer and die and 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 be raised and. And Peter, Peter immediately then says, oh, you shouldn't do that. You shouldn't, that, that shouldn't be done. And Jesus says to him, get behind me because you're talking like Satan. Um, and again, he'll say that in the other gospels too. Uh, but it's amazing how quickly it comes, you know, in today's gospel upon, you know, Peter's declaration that Jesus is the Christ. Again, Peter can identify all kinds of things that Jesus is. He can make all kinds of great kinds of statements, but he doesn't know the ramifications of what that means. And he doesn't know the consequences of what it means to be the Messiah in this world. Jesus corrects him because of that. Um, in many ways, we ourselves need to make sure that when we, you know, hold up the pious, the holy, the devout, the wonderful that we identify on our own in our lives, that we are doing that correctly. Because again, as God sees, we, we do not see. Um, and as God understands, we rarely understand. It is aligning ourselves with God's sight and God's understanding that the power of God's presence in our lives is revealed. And may the Lord give you his peace.